to be a lot of fun. My guest today is Dennis Mong, a local real estate cooking. This was discovered by some very thoughtful people at the North Bay Department of Parks and Recreation in Canador College. And he's going to today, today he's going to be preparing a stir fry dish that is simple, easy, quick and inexpensive. I'm sure Dennis will be able to demystify any bad things you've ever thought about oriental cooking and make it fun and easy for you. Welcome to the show, Dennis. Thank you very much, Chris. Good, good. I understand that you're instructing an oriental course in Chinese cooking and various other methods of cooking. And um, for both the North Bay Department of Parks and Recreation and Canada College? That is correct, yes. And how and when did you get involved? Oh, about 14 years ago there through Canada <laughs> College. Someone asked me to do it and uh, I enjoyed it and uh, I got onto the show there, so. Good, good. Can you describe for our audience the course I outline and how and when they can register for enrollment? Uh, I think the registration has started already through the Parks and Rec as well as Canada College and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the, uh, the enrollments are right now there but uh, I would suggest them possibly to check with the college or the uh, Department of Parks and Rec and see uh, what is the scheduling there. That's good, that's good. And they're evening classes, they're not during the day. No, it's a fun correct. course. It's mm -hmm. not something serious. It's uh, for anybody that ever burnt water. <laughs> that would be great for them because uh, you don't have to have any knowledge really of cooking uh, oh, yes. at all. And uh, as I will show you there, uh, this this year is very very simple to uh, to uh, make, mm -hmm. and it's very very inexpensive. And that's a lot of uh, that's one of the things that a lot of people are thinking is that they don't know how much it's going to cost them to do these things. Right. I'm going to show you here how. To, uh, how you can save money and eat uh, very nutri uh, nutritiously. Good, good. Um, there are utensils. Um, there aren't many utensils involved in oriental cooking, are there? There's your basic wok, which we have over here, and several others. Maybe you could just take mm -hmm. time out to explain them to us. Okay, I think the uh, concept here really is that uh, because this comes from the Orient, they utilize what they have there to use. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you are here in Canada, and you cannot find a utensil, you don't have to use these kind of utensils too. Use every day your pots and your pans and your spatulas, etc. You can do the same, uh, same thing. It's just sometimes very psychologically if uh, you're doing some uh, oriental cooking. If you have these utensil utensils here, you tend to have psychologically it tastes better because you did it on the, uh, in the real, oriental the real stuff. way, yes. right, that's correct. But uh, if you do have something at home, a frying pan or a Dutch oven pot, uh, etc., you can do the same, exactly the same, that's the good. same thing here. But I will show you some of these uh, utensils that are involved here. Mm -hmm. One thing that you will uh, see a lot in the restaurants is this thing, contraption here, what we call the wok. Now, they have really huge woks there because they're doing commercially. This is a more of a domestic type uh, wok that uh, you can buy at uh, a store. Uh, you, might, you might have one at home and it might be a rounded one uh, at home. Now, this one here is the flat one which you can put right on the electric, frying, uh, the electric stove. And uh, this one here can be utilized for electric as well as for the gas, uh, gas heating type of, uh, of uh, heating system. So this is the wok and uh, it's made of steel mm -hmm. and uh, what, what it does really essentially is that when we're doing our cooking it stir fries the food and uh, with this little well sort of type of, uh, of uh, uh, shape yes. uh, then they can, they, can spill, they can stir it without uh, spilling the food all over. I see. This, this isn't Teflon coated as a lot of the pots are these days and so I guess with the even distribution of heat, it would make the stir-fry process much easier and, and that is conducive to the quickness of the, the preparation, right. is that correct? I think what happens here is that in, in China, they can only find steel, I so see. therefore they utilize the old steel. But it became more and more westernized and a lot of people wanted to have the wax and uh, I guess it become more westernized and they, they utilize the metal that they have available and uh, they're making uh, uh, wax that are copper and uh, Teflon, electric box, all types of wax. So okay. it's uh, basic uh, 
Super. Utensil. So this is the main thing with the lid. That's the lid here, and usually, like I say, any Dutch oven can or uh, a pot here, you can do the same thing. There's a lid on there. Okay, Dennis. Well, we're going to take a short break right now, and we'll be back in two minutes' time. Dennis will get started with the preparation of the vegetables and the chicken, which is going to be added to the dish. And we invite you to come back and join us. He is going to be teaching an oriental cooking class in conjunction with Canador College and the North Bay Department of Parks and Recreation. So, shall we get started, Dennis? Sure, all right. Uh, what I've started here now, this dish is very, very easy to make. And this is, uh, this, this is what we call a stir-fried uh, vegetable dish. It is, uh, or you, if you want to call it a hot oriental tossed salad, let's say. Okay. Okay, so uh, it's very, very, uh, uh, very inexpensive and it's very easy. Uh, I think the secret of this really is uh, that whatever you have in your fridge that uh, looks like green vegetables or a red vegetable uh, or anything else uh, that you have left over from the fridge. Mm -hmm. And then you can just put them all in one pot and stir fry it and then you can create uh, a different uh, dish for you. So what I'm going to do here today is that we're going to stir fry some vegetables and we have some mushrooms here. Uh, I look into the, our, uh, the refrigerator this morning and this is what I found left from the refrigerator. <laughs> that's so great. that's what we're going to do. And I picked this out from the garden, from my garden in the back. And these are snow peas, oriental snow peas, uh, what they call uh, edible pod peas. And you eat the whole thing. There's no peas in, there is peas inside, but you can eat the whole thing. So what we do is we're just going to take, just uh, uh, take these strings out of the peas. And like I say, it, uh, this can be any kind of vegetable that you can be using. So the longest time really to uh, do one of these dishes is the preparation time. That's what we're doing right now. This process takes approximately seven to eight minutes just to get everything prepared. And then when it's prepared, uh, then you can start cooking. It's great for those uh, short, quick, um, you know, getting the phone call, we're having company for dinner, oh my god this is what I have to do. And it, you can virtually make it up in less than a half an hour. Then. That's correct, yes. Good. You, can, you can serve, uh, you know, serve uh, four or five people or six people at a time if you want. It's very easy. Great, to do. great. So there we go. We're almost done here on these snow peas. Okay, so that's done. And you just put that aside. And I cut up some mushrooms here already. Now, the cutting of the vegetables here, can be any kind of shape. If you want to do a little fancy shaping, cutting, whatever, then you can also do so. Uh, most people here, they can... Now, this is also, I didn't say anything about that. This is the oriental cleaver that they use, and it's a very versatile knife. It uh, slices, it cuts, and then also, now, this is a piece of garlic. Now, all oriental, this is the ancient, the old ancient Chinese secret, I guess, yeah. that they call it. And, uh, and uh, they always wonder, how come your food tastes so good? Or what do they put in it? Now, the spices are very important. That's one of them. And you can uh, buy this in the grocery store, so there's no, no problem in getting uh, access to it. So therefore, you need approximately a good size, maybe half a clove to a quarter of a clove. So get that ready. Uh, we have here a green pepper, and the size of this cutting here all depends on really um, how long you cook it. The smaller it is, of course, it's going to cook faster. Much quicker, yes. Uh, if you're going to put a whole piece like that in, then it's going to take a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, we cut out the green pepper, and we're going to put a little bit of onions in it. For a very colorful dish, all these different vegetables, and basically whatever you have, you just throw it just into the water. Just throw it in. Just Great. that just happened to be what's in the fridge, so I just pull whatever I had out there. Okay. Now, of course, the amount, the ingredients here uh, does not necessarily have to be measured. If you like a lot of green peppers, put a lot of green peppers in. If you like a lot of mushroom, put a lot of mushrooms in, etc. So whatever you can, you can create your own dish. Okay. I also uh, found uh, some broccoli here. This makes a little bit of uh, color to it. Now, if you do have a knife at home here, I would suggest uh, be very careful with it because it's very sharp. Yes, that does look very, very sharp. 
have a box of Band-Aids or a towel <laughs> around, I guess. Okay, but so I, I see you've become rather adept at handling this. It's, it's kind of second nature to you now, I believe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just part of the tool that you use for your cooking, so it's very, uh, we're very comfortable with it. You mm -hmm. gave me a smaller knife and I probably cut my finger with it. <laughs> Now, one thing here also, too, I want to show you here is uh, a lot of people ask me in the courses how to debone a chicken, uh, chicken breast. Now, um, when, you, when you go to the grocery store here, you purchase a, you know, some chicken breast, it's already deboned, mm -hmm. and it's very, very expensive. Very, yes. So this chicken uh, breast that I have here, you're probably looking at uh, no more than about around $1.20, $1.30 uh, for this chicken breast here. And the vegetables, like I say, whatever you have in your fridge, just pull it out. Now, the first thing you do here is just, just put the skin back. And this will be all, all uh, taken in the course there as well, too, so they, they have a chance to, uh, to learn how to do that. You just cut from the joint here, and then what you do, you just hold on to it and pull. That's as easy as that. Oh, and there's your chicken breast right there. Now there is another piece right in here which you can also use and uh, you can just pull that out and you got another piece. So now this, you see, you can utilize the chicken bone here for your soup broth and uh, you know, boil soup with them and so on. So we have a chicken breast now, just a, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of meat here to put in, in one dish, but we don't use it all. This is all you really need, just one small piece like that. And like I say, it cost about around $1.50 uh, in that range. So really, we're looking at about 50 cents worth of meat, whatever you have in the fridge. So it's very economically uh, a meal that you can have. Mm -hmm. OK, so we just trim a little bit of fat off. And just we just slice this in the small bits. Now, this does not have to be chicken. I'm just using chicken just to show you. You can uh, use pork, on, beef, you can use pork, beef, veal, left. anything. That's right, yes. Virtually. Or, or anything that's left over from a roast or something, a roast turkey, uh, you know, a roast beef, and you can utilize that as well. Good. Okay, so we just... Uh, now, it's not necessary really to marinate the meat here, only if we're using possibly a um, uh, the beefs or... Uh, we, we sometimes marinate that, but the chicken here has got a good flavor to it. We mix it in with the spices, and then it should be good. Set. So that's really all the preparation time uh, that you really require. And uh, you just from here on, it's just the cooking process now. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to start uh, on the cooking, then oh, okay. we just... Now, we were saying before the show, or you were telling me that this is a propane wok, is that correct? Uh, this is just a wok here. This is the propane, uh, a portable propane that uh, can be taken really anywhere. You can take it camping, whatever, and you can have Chinese food in the camp. But who wants to have Chinese food when you're out in the bush? <laughs> and you can have something else there. But anyways, uh, this is a propane, and uh, also there's electric wok. You just plug in the wok and, uh, and go to it. Great. Okay. okay. So here we, we have here, let's see. Just turn it on, make sure it's on, all set to go. Now the secret also uh, in, in this cooking to have a good flavor is you have to have the wok really hot. And that's okay. a mistake that a lot of people are making when they're cooking with the wok, uh, that they don't have the wok hot enough. And I will show you how hot it will get. Okay. Uh, the inexpensive woks uh, that you buy in a kit, so to speak, it includes uh, a few utensils, and it's just your standard, I don't know whether it's all steel or an alloy, you have to do something, you have to season the wok. What correct, exactly yes. is that? mean? Uh, seasoning there is just like a, if you purchase a, uh, a cast iron uh, frying pan, for example, you mm -hmm. have to do some uh, curing of the uh, cast iron so it will not rust. And the same idea with this here. We have to cure it. And this one here is a brand new one, actually. It's uh, not a brand new. It's just been used a couple of times. It's not quite cure yet, but it will cure it itself. And uh, if you want a fast curing on it, you just put a light coat of oil on it, put it on the heat, and it just bakes the heat, uh, bakes the oil right onto the wok. I see. And uh, so your, um, your food, when you're cooking, is not sticking onto the, the wok here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's really, uh, we're waiting for the wok to get hot here. Now, remember that garlic that uh, we used, we smashed here? This knife here, you can just smash it. And that is your flavor that goes into the meat and onto the vegetable dishes as well. Okay, 
what do we have here? We, we have, have some, uh, just some vegetable oil. You oh, can yes. use any, any type of oil, corn oil, vegetable oil, uh, olive oil. Uh, you can use lard if you wanted to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you can see the color of this uh, wok here. Oh, you can get a picture of this here, but mm -hmm. this wok here, see, is getting really hot. It's turning blue. So that's the time here when you put the oil in, and you might have a little smoke coming out. Now, I think maybe, Chris, you can stand back here. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay, you see it? It's smoking, and it's getting hot. Now, that's the way that your wok should be uh, before you put anything in. The first thing you put in is your garlic. And you have a spatula here that you can just move around. You can either leave the garlic in and have the flavor, or uh, you can take it out. Now, with the, with the garlic in, you put the mix, your meats in, you stir it around. See how fast it is cooking the meat? It's already mm -hmm. almost cooked. It smells good already, I might add. You can smell the garlic and the chicken. The flavor is intermingling already. Okay, so once it's uh, lightly brown, you can add a wee bit of more oil into it. Now, you can start adding into your vegetables. You can add them all in at once or you can put in in stages. Now, the reason why we put in stages is because we want the um, vegetable, vegetable to have all the same texture. Mm -hmm. Every one is going to be crispy. So the broccoli is a harder vegetable, so therefore it will take a little longer to cook. So we add the broccoli in first. And, and with, with the vegetables, the advantage of stir-frying is that, number one, it is crispy in texture still, but it doesn't lose any of its original color, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And all your, your, uh, your uh, gravy, your water that you put in, it stays into the food. Whereas if you're boiling the vegetables and you put it on a table, you strain the water out, and all the nutrition, uh, all the vitamins and so on will be gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now... What we're going to do here, so we add a little bit of water in. And we can put a lid on here and let it cook for about one or two minutes. Here. Okay. And I, I notice on the plate that you've got all of the vegetables together. You don't have to set them in separate in separate containers because the flavors are all going to be intermingling in the pot itself, That's is that right. correct? It's all going to one place, so we just, like I said earlier, it's just like a hot toss salad there, and <laughs> right. we toss them all together. Right. The tomato, um, I notice you haven't added that. I don't know if you okay. are or as yet, but does it lose any of its firmness in, in the wok? I assume it, it would. It does uh, to a certain extent. It does. I will uh, show you on that tomato here in a second here what we're going to do with it. I was out in the garden this morning, I looked at my tomato plant, and I liked the color of this, so I, I picked it off of my mm. garden here. Okay, now if we can... Now make sure that your kitchen fan is on, otherwise you're gonna have smoke in the room and your smoke detector might go off. So here we have stir-fry for about a minute. We can now add all the vegetables in. Now these vegetables here, are uh, all within the same texture. We want the nice green color of the, uh, of the green peppers. And the mushrooms, you can eat almost raw in salads. And your onions, you can put everything in at once. Just stir it up a little bit. It's starting to come a little dry. You add a little bit of oil in. Now the oil also gives it a nice shiny texture too. As you can see, it uh, gives you a nice shine to it. Stir fry it, and also now we add more water. I might add that for the calorie conscious members of the audience, it, it's really very low in calorie content. Is that not correct? It, you know, your virtual fattening substance would be your oil, which is, you know, it's burned off eventually That's anyway. Right. Oil or correct? your meat, like you don't have to put meat in. If you just like to have just a vegetable dish, stir mm -hmm. fry, you can do exactly the same and eliminate the meat. Uh, if you want a little flavor in, you can put the meat in as well, too. That's good. Now, I'm cutting up this uh, tomato. Mm -hmm. The tomato, sometimes when you're in a restaurant eating uh, or ordering something, they come out and if the dish doesn't look very appetizing and it doesn't have a flair to it, your, 
you have a, your your food doesn't seem to taste as good. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we try to decorate the food as much as possible and give it a little bit extra extra color. Oh, look at this! So here we are. We're ready now, almost uh, done. And as you can see, it takes very very little time. This is the time here. If you like more gravy here, this is the time you add some more water. So we just add a little touch of water in to thicken thicken the uh, the uh, gravy. We use a cornstarch mixture and water. Now the amount is not really important uh, as long as you just get a consistency of starch and water. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to just add this in. You can never make a mistake when you're cooking Chinese food because you can always add things into it and, uh, and make it good. That's very reassuring to know. <laughs> like I said earlier, if you've burnt water before, uh, I'm sure that uh, you will learn a lot cooking and uh, it's very, very easy to, to do. See, as you can see, the gravy is now thickening. Maybe we could just tilt it up a bit okay. just to indicate. I don't know if you can see it. Nice green color to it. You're not mm -hmm. overcooking it. You got to remember you cook it and uh, it, um, it takes a little while on the plate as well too. The final touch to this here, we add the tomato in. It gives it a little bit of red color to that. Okay. So really that's all there is to it. And then you put it onto a plate. And you have your stir fry vegetable dish. There you have it. Great. You can decorate it with with almonds or or any kind of yeah, or noodles. Some noodles? some people they put noodles in as well too, and uh, and almonds and so on. You would serve this. Could you serve this with a vermicelli or with with noodles, uh, soft noodles, even mm -hmm. on top of spaghetti. There, you want to have it on. Mm -hmm. uh, usually you serve it with just plain steamed rice and with the gravy and everything you mix in with the rice. And uh, that's a dish here that you can have for about two persons with the rice. And uh, I think it would cost less than about maybe a dollar fifty to make. Oh, so that's very, 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 very interesting. interesting. You can use cauliflower, you can use almonds, you can use... Anything. Anything. Anything, anything you, you set your hands to, peanuts. Mm. That's right. Just yeah. throw it on yeah. in. This is more of a of a Cantonese, what we call a Cantonese style dish. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're uh, learning is we're learning in the course here is the Cantonese style dish as well as the westernized dish such as the egg rolls, sweet and sours, and uh, the chop sueys and etc. So mm -hmm. they're going to have a, a wide variety of, uh, uh, of dishes here that they can. I see. Take the back one. I notice you have the mushroom soy sauce here. Uh, that's just a an elaborate or or a more advanced version of your regular soy sauce that you buy in a store. Yes, uh, they're starting to make soy sauce all different types now. So they have a mushroom soil, which also uh, I I could have put some into the dish here when we we're doing it. But the gravy was nice and brown already. Mm -hmm. And if you want a darker gravy, then of course you put a little bit of soy sauce just to enhance the flavor a little bit. So as you can see here, we didn't use anything that you can't get at, uh, at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do everything at home exactly uh, at the, the, your local supermarket. That's great. I have a question um, concerning duck. Uh, I, I find that very intimidating to read a recipe with duck in it. Quickly, how, how do you, um, the advanced preparation, do you have to boil it first to remove some of the fatty oils or? I think it all depends on a certain type of ducks that you have. I see. Some ducks are a little fattier than others and uh, mm. uh, there's different ways of doing this. Oh, that's uh, good. And, and you can substitute the chicken or whatever again with duck and that's there right, are yes. very elaborate duck recipes like Peking duck and... Yeah, Sequan duck and uh, there's, there's just many, many recipes, I'm sure, that other uh, countries has developed as well, too, mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. And your course will teach the, the students how to modify them accordingly. That's right. That's, that's good. It's a very creative course, and what we uh, go through is just the basics of the course, and from then on, uh, you can create anything, really, of your own. Great. And you can call it uh, 
uh, the house special or if you want to. Uh, right, or mystery know. surprise. Yeah, right. <laughs> One other thing here, mm -hmm. Chris, if I can just sure. go through here. Uh, to clean your walks here, you see you have a special brush, what we call a bamboo brush. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the, like this walk here, we just put a little bit of water in and slosh it out and that's it. And we're ready to go again. Great. So there's no elaborate cleaning that's necessary on that. You don't, you don't recommend using a soapy sud kind of water? No, it's not really necessary because mm -hmm. the natural oil in here will also preserve the uh, walk from rusting as well too. Fantastic. So that's why, yeah. Thank you for stopping in today. Thank you very much. It was for very, me. very interesting. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, we've learned, I know I've learned quite a bit today. Um, it's kind of made oriental cooking a little less mystical and more realistic and very quick. Um, the utensils we have here are inexpensive, very minimal, and very easy to use, evidently. Just remember that you have your basic wok, you have your cleaver, you can substitute with a very sharp knife, be it small, large, cleaver type style, and you have a spatula and your basic, I guess, what would you call that's this? That's a mixer. One? That's a mixer, yeah, I see. In case you have a really huge heaping here, you can use two of the utensils here. It's just effective in redistributing the heat right, within yes. the vegetables that's and right. possibly making the cooking time that much shorter. Thank you again. Thank you. Hope for great weather this weekend, and I might add thank you for joining us today. Have a good afternoon, and we'll see you again Monday morning at 11.30 on Everyday People.